Hey there, welcome to Board Game Barrister, our local game shop in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It is Tuesday, which means we got to play a game today, and today our game was Museum Suspects, a cool little game from Blue Orange where a museum has been robbed and we are rival investigators trying to figure out who done it before everybody else can do the same. We even get to throw each other off our trails a little bit. We are going to talk about everything we like to get about the game, everything that was so cool about the investigation and kind of bluffing your way into victory. Uh, but before we do all that, I am here with my fellow barristers, Glenn and Elizabeth, and we're going to talk about how the game plays for a second. Welcome to Museum Suspects. The museum's been robbed, and each game we're gonna have 16 random suspects who could've done it. It's up to the players to race their fellow investigators in the search to find who the real culprit or culprits are, and then invest as many of their investigation points as they can on those culprits. Each game will also have eight random clue cards. Those clue cards are gonna give us information about which suspects we can eliminate. Some of them are positional, and will give you a line of suspects who you know aren't the one who did it, and some of them will be about the suspects themselves, like the ones with headphones around their necks, or the eagles out on the table. Each player's turn is going to have two parts, the first of which is to look at a clue. When a player picks one of those clues to look at, like the beret that I just found here, they're going to keep that information secret, and then they're going to go into their investigation journal, and they're going to cross off the clue that they found so that they know which ones they've seen, and then they're going to cross off all of the suspects who match that information. The last part of looking at a clue is going to be taking one of your tokens of a value of your choosing and putting it down on the clue that you looked at. From now on, any player who wants to look at that clue in this phase of their turn is going to have to pay a token of that value or higher in order to look at it. So you can start to lock players out of clues by playing high value tokens or just lead them on the wrong trail. The second part of your turn is to suggest just a culprit. Now you're going to use one of your investigation tokens, again of your choice, in this phase, but this time you're going to play it face down on any of the suspects out on the table. At the end of the game we're going to look at who has the most points invested in our final culprits, and those will be our final scores, but this phase of your turn is also a good way to throw people off the trail. You could even put this token on a suspect you've already eliminated, just to try to make somebody else think they're still in the running. So there's a lot of games out there that on their surface look like museum suspects. You've got a grid of suspects that you're trying to slowly eliminate certain elements of them. Interestingly, in this game, that mechanic is very simple and is like the easiest part of the game. The real intrigue in this game is in the hidden information and the ways you can lock each other out of information. You can put tokens on the clues that everybody else is trying to see that will make them pay a bunch of their investigation points in order to look at the same clue that you've already seen. And this even opens the door to say, oh, that's great information. I'm going to put a high cost on this so nobody else can see it. Or like Glenn kind of did in the game we just played, you could put a low token on it to bluff people out into thinking that it's not very useful information. And then nobody might look at that key information until the end of the game, which got me in the end. So that part was super cool. Oh! Unlike other deduction games, there's not a perfect answer for every game. There's not an envelope where the missing components are just, this is the answer. They've mechanically found a way for there to either be multiple true suspects or only one true suspect, or in fact, there could be zero and there is a mechanic for voting on the uh, it's nobody, um, it is none of these. And so you have this really replayable aspect and you just don't know for sure uh, aspect. One of the really interesting mechanics uh, is the point tokens that you are using to lock out clues to the other players are the same points or the same currency you're spending to bid or vote on your suspect. So you have to be careful not to overextend yourself on the uh, the clue blocking mechanic because you want to have enough points left over to vote for the suspect you think is going to be it at the end of the game. Piggybacking on that with, with these tokens too is you don't want to just spend all your high ones out here right away because then you're going to have clues you're going to be locked out of because if someone put a bunch of fours and fives down and you spent all your fives and sixes out here there's fewer things for you to look at because you won't be able to afford to look at those clues. Okay, of course, I don't have a five left, so I can't look at what you just looked at. However... There it is. There's the game. I can, however... The big burn on look the Look at the other <laughs> card that only Glenn has seen. 
We always like to look at the note-taking element they give you in a game like this. First off, so this is your note-taking sheet. I'll give you a close-up of that guy as well. It gives you ways to record the cards that you've seen, so you can go back and retrace your steps just in case you're wondering how you got to a conclusion or why you crossed something off. So every clue card is represented on here. You can cross off the clue card or circle the clue card that you've already seen and then make your eliminations based on that card information. But the part we were most excited about is that they made the sheets two-sided, which you definitely don't have to do it. Like, this is a cool little investigator notebook like you'd see a detective carrying around. And the fact that they made those two-sided was just super nice and means that you get to play the game twice as many times as you would have otherwise. And not just two-sided. You can play through this whole side and then just flip the notebook oh, yeah. over and go through the back way. Yep. So this game, I think, is great for families because, one, you can have those... This will appeal to some of the slightly older kids, but I think it's also appeal is that when you have kids sometimes and you as the parent playing the game, it's like, oh, I'm going to play the game again. But this is one as a parent I would feel fine playing with, or as an uncle, fine playing with my nieces. I'm still thinking, I'm still, you know, working stuff out myself so I can still have fun with it, even playing with younger kids. I really like how each game is really different and it, it mm -hmm. does feel really replayable, so if you are playing with kids, even younger kids, and they say, I want to play again, I'm I'm fine with that. I really am. <laughs> and they, they listed the low age range on the game for eight-year-olds, which is totally in bounds. An eight-year-old could interact with the game at kind of its basis level and still do really well and succeed, where they were just looking for the suspect, trying to bet all their big tokens on the right character, uh, and trying to pull that off. And then for people who've played more or older kids, they might start to interact more with the actual like locking out tokens and bluffing elements of the game. So uh, it, it would be just as fun for a kid in the eight-year-old range with people playing with them as it would be for anybody else who wanted to get into those other elements of the game. Alrighty, well that about does it for our takeaways of our first ever game of Museum Suspects. We hope you had fun watching, we had a great time with the game, and if you did have fun and you want to see more videos like this, we post them every week, so hit that subscribe button and you get to see those when they go up. If you leave a comment, we'll get right back to you, we love chatting with our viewers, and as always, if you hit the like button, the YouTube algorithm is going to show this video to more people, so we really appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining us this week, and we will see you next time.